thinking about lifespans of trees, obviously they have their biological lifespan, which for a sugar maple can be well over 300 years old. But in an area where we're managing that forest and reviewing that sugar maple through the lifespan of how long does it take to grow to a certain product, we have a term we often use as called rotation. So kind of the, the period between the beginning and end either of a tree's life um, or the beginning and the end of a stand's life in the case of an even age forest. So the way we factor in what is the rotation age, that is what age am I gonna cut this tree? We're really looking at what is the product size we're trying to grow that to? So is there a maximum diameter that we wanna grow that tree to above which we might still get some additional economic gain, but the risk is too high to keep growing that tree longer and longer. Or possibly I'm thinking about it in terms of how much have I invested in that forest and the rate of return I need to generate to actually pay off that investment. So with sugar maple, often we're managing these using uneven age management. So it's what we call single tree or group selection. So we're, we're harvesting individual sugar maple or groups of sugar maple. So we're doing it at kind of a tree level rotation. And what we're often factoring in is again, is it reach the diameter, kind of the maximum diameter we want in that stand above which we're just concerned that future defects might develop in this tree that might reduce its timber value. For sugaring, it's very different. You know, a tree can produce sugar, you know, well into its you know, 200, even 300 years old. And so kind of tree level rotations in terms of sugaring really might not be similarly transferable from timber production. And, and really, as long as that tree is healthy, as long as that tree is still producing sap, in many cases should still be out in that forest because even as it's declining, it's providing some other values in terms of habitat and so forth.